Okay, welcome to our lesson on drawing the portrait. First, you can see I'm blocking in, I'm looking, mapping things out, looking at the major shapes. I've got the axis in, of the head in there, um, a few vertical distances, and then uh, right away I'm looking for the widths of things, how wide things are. Um, this is still basically the first pass through the drawing and I'm just looking for the big shapes that things take up. You can see that I've not placed in the eyes yet. Um, that's just a bit too specific too fast. I am however beginning to drop in some shadow shapes because the shadow shapes actually help me to proportion. I can use the shapes of the shadows for comparison just like any other body part. So I'm going ahead and placing those in. Um, however, I'm not at this point thinking very much about specific values of things. I'm pretty much working in two values. Um, pretty much just the value of the paper and a slightly darker value to represent the shadows for now. Later on in the drawing I will get more specific with the values and I'll move up toward the lights and down toward the darker values. But for now it's just those two values, the values of the paper and a slightly darker value for the shadows that I'm pretty much using uniformly To represent the shadows. Uh, looks like I'm going in for a second pass here where I'm actually starting to open up the value range a little bit um, because I, I felt like I was getting a good likeness in the face. Uh, considering that the model has a big beard, I I didn't feel the need to work out a whole lot more than the eyes and nose. So I'm actually starting to develop that that one eye as something to compare against. It helps me a lot if I go ahead and establish one area fairly well to compare the other areas too. pulling in some half tones and shadows into the eyes and now developing some of the architecture of the head trying to show the skull underneath very important to think of and represent the skull that's underneath the skin I kind of think of a head as being sort of a dressed skull Now dropping in the cast shadow from the nose. Oh, you can see there, I'm about to move in with some light, the light masses. You, you saw that I uh, erased some of those lines that I initially put down. And that's because the white pencil does not mix well at all with the graphite. So I've made room for the white. I'm dropping it in here, starting with just the highlights and uh, then moving in to some of the uh, other higher lit areas blocking in the a little bit of the beard there um, when you represent somebody with a beard it's important to uh, think of the large shapes that it takes up, the big masses rather than the individual strands. Um, it can be uh, same thing with hair. Um, it could be a big mess to start trying to draw every little 
strand of hair or beard. Um, and it's not really the way that we see things anyway. We see things in big masses. Um, and there might be movements of hair or locks of hair, and that's what we want to be representing. And hair, too, has light and shadow sides. And I think of it in a very similar way to the way I think of fabric, representing fabric. Really pulling out some of the subtlety of the form in the forehead there. Uh, I'm trying to show the skull underneath. And I'm being careful to uh, not handle the half tones as though they were uh, shadows. I'm keeping them lighter, remembering they're part of the light mass. There, I'm pulling out some of the highlights in the forehead. I really wanted to um, separate it from the hat there. Now, really pushing the darks and the eyes. You can see as I go, I gradually bring more and more. Uh, contrast into the drawing. Really modeling some of the, fine tuning some of the form in the nose with some half tones. Uh, you can see uh, throughout the drawing I'm keeping the strokes pretty broad and pretty quick. Um, even in the white, even in the half tones and the shadows, I'm keeping that uh, those quick hatches. There I'm developing some form in the forehead. The cheek there with some half tones. Pulling in white with the same kind of rapid strokes. It takes a lot of practice to make strokes like that. and uh, I think it's a good idea to practice that as often as you can I remember that an eye, uh, the opening of the eye is not the eye, is not the whole thing. We tend to think and represent an eye um, as like a flat football shape with an iris dropped in it. Um, but the eye is that entire area uh, where the eyeball turns under. Um, remember, there's an eyeball underneath the skin of the eye or the eyelid and uh, I wanted to, to uh, try to encourage you to not close off the shape of the eyes in uh, in any kind of a uh, a hard shape um, you want to leave an openness in the shape around the eye and avoid uh, drawing it as as a, like a closed ellipse. Uh, rather, draw attention to the three-dimensional form of the eye. In other words, uh, avoid outlining the eye and draw attention to the uh, three-dimensional aspects of it. The shadows, the half-tones, The underplanes of the eyeball turning under, underplanes of the eye sockets. Here I'm dropping a half tone to show that side plane of the head. A whole lot of drawing the head is just separating the front planes from the side planes. I think of the facial features as basically being formed out of underplanes or down-facing planes. If you light a head slightly from above, the all the down-facing planes 
will catch shadow. Um, starting with the eyes, those shadows and the eye sockets are created from those down facing planes under the brow ridge. And then the nose is formed out of that. A shadow from the nose is formed out of that underplane of the nose. If uh, we could see the model's lips, if he didn't have such a big beard, uh, the upper lip would also be an underplane, then the bottom of the lower lip, and then the chin. From here, it looks like the face is basically formed, and uh, I just sort of get to spend the rest of the time having fun and further developing things. Pushing the contrast, pulling in more light, maybe pushing some of the darks a little bit further. See, even in those highlights, I'm I'm using those broad, rapid strokes. Pulling out all that form in the light mass with half tones to push back and white pencil to pull out the highlights. Here I'm dropping some dark accents in to enhance that feeling of the head receding back on the sides. really helps to learn a little bit about anatomy. Pick up what you can here and there and learn the parts of the skull, the muscles of the face. This is a uh, this model's name is Skip, and uh, this is a hat, a Viking hat that he actually made out of leather. I thought it was kind of interesting. As I go, I'm opening up the value range, just pushing more contrast, darkening the darks, pulling out the lights, and uh, articulating the form and uh, I'm I will probably continue this drawing past the video but hopefully this is enough to show you how I get started I'll at times use the side of my pencil. You can see I'm using, I'm working with a woodless graphite pencil. And uh, that allows me to turn it on its side at times. And um, it breaks the stroke a little bit um, and gives it a look similar to, um, a little more similar to a piece of charcoal and let some of the grain of the paper show through. And then in other times I'll go back up on the tip of the pencil. This gives you a little bit of variety. I think it's a great idea to have a variety of types of pencils, even to sharpen them differently, experiment with different ways of sharpening your pencil. Okay, and now is a great time to practice drawing the portrait.